Hey guys, Water24 here once again with the part 3 of the secret box video, which I mentioned, I believe I mentioned it in the previous two videos. They're all the From the Vault series, so since I'm going in order of when they came out, we're going to have to do Relics next. Which this came out right before Scars of Mirrodin, so there is a Scars of Mirrodin preview card in Relics. And I think it's between like this one and Realms that's like my favorite box because it's like a shiny silver artifact looking texture on it. Let me just go ahead and open this up. We have a Mox Diamond like fancy artwork here, which you can of course tell it's Mox Diamond based on that. And then well, you can also see uh, the new art for Soul Ring, the Karn. Um, Let's see here, what else can we tell from this? It's hard for me to see what else is here. It's so shiny. I believe there's, yeah, there's Mass Decor here. Um, so we got some pretty nice stuff in here. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Or actually, look at the back here for a second. You got all kinds of neat stuff here. Jester's Cap, Mox Diamond... And, let's see here, um, let me focus this. We got Isochron Scepter, Mirari, the Soul Ring, the Sword of Body and Mind, which is the preview card for the Scars of Mirrodin, since this came out right before. So you start out, so if you got this, you got start out with a nice and shiny uh, Scars of Mirrodin card. Same artwork, of course. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up this box. I'm going to, I'm going to, Go ahead, just, yeah, I'm still going to set it off to the side there. So I'm going to lift this out first. Pull out this little pack here. So, of course it goes through history of some of the artifacts in the set. Talks about the Mirari for a bit there. And then more stories of the cards here we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we pretty much have Mirari and Karn Silver Golem up in there. So I set that off to the side for a second. Now Relics is a really cool die. Let me just go ahead and open this. Uh oh. Hmm. There we go. Got me there for a second. Um, set these off to the side. Now, oops, hmm. not enough room here. Uh, so then we have the relics die. It's really nice, and it's like the artifact color, so that's cool. Let me go ahead and set that with the other two I've already opened. So I'm gonna start off with the uh, master core pack here, and. Master Core was originally printed in, well, they're not in alphabetical order, in Urza's Destiny, which was June 1999. So, costs four mana. At the beginning of your upkeep, you sacrifice him unless you discard a card. You pay two, deals one damage to target creature, pay two, regenerate him. So, that's kind of interesting here. Let me go ahead and uh, open up. This pack. I'm gonna put that over there. Um, this is still a little lopsided there. There we go. That's a little bit better. All right. So we looked at Mast Core. Then we have Ether Vial, which Ether Vial is from the Dark Steel expansion in February 2004 from the Mirrodin block. Costs one colorless. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a charge counter on Ether Vial. And then you tap, and you may put a creature card with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on Ether from your hand onto the battlefield. So that's a pretty nice card there, too. Very nice. Alright, then we have uh, Black Vice here. And it costs one. It was. Printed in limited edition Alpha Corset in 
August of 1993, and last printed in 4th edition corset, April 1995. And it costs one colorless mana, of course, well, all these are colorless. Because they're artifacts. Anyway. As Black Vice enters the battlefield, choose an opponent at the beginning of chosen player's upkeep. Deal X damage to that player, where X is the number of cards in his or her hand, minus four. Interesting. So, this would be a very nice um, first card you play there. You have Isochron Scepter, which I believe recently put in Is It versus Golgari. I think, if I remember correctly. Alright, so, cost two, imprint. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile an instant or converted mana cost, two, uh, an instant card with converted mana cost, two or less from your hand. For two and, yeah, for two colorless and tap, you may copy the, the exile card. If you do, you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Which essentially you did. So, I'm not quite sure why they definitely have that, but Isochron Scepter was originally from the Mirrodin expansion in October 2003. The original Mirrodin. Then we have Ivory Tower. Costs 1. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life for X the number of cards in your hand, minus 4. So, pretty much it's like a... Opposite of Black Vice. Come to think of it, it's like a... Yeah, it is. It's a mirrored pair there. So that must mean Ivory Tower was oh no it was from the Antiquities expansion in 1994 and last printed in fourth edition. So it wasn't like a full one there. It wasn't like a full um, dual pair or a mirrored pair there, but it became that in the end. All right, let me go ahead and take that out. Take this out. Of course, this is our preview of Scars of Mirrodin, but we already have one. Well, I already have Scars of Mirrodin, and I'm assuming anyone that has not just started the game also has Scars of Mirrodin cards. Possibly even has this one. So let's go ahead and uh, open this up here. Being very careful. I don't want to damage these cards because I want to keep them in perfect condition until I put them in sleeves. Alright, Sword of Body and Mind, one of my favorite cards to use. I have people, like, quit playing against me when they had, like, a green deck, and I was using this and a white-red. Oh, that was wonderful. Three mana. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and is protection from green and blue. And whenever the equipped creature deals damage to a player, you put a two-two green wolf creature token under the battlefield, and the player puts the top ten cards of his or her library into, into his or her graveyard. So... Well, you have protection from green and blue. You're also getting the blue of the uh, milling ten cards, and or your opponent gets to face the blue of milling ten cards, and you get the green benefit of a two-two wolf creature token. So that is a very nice card, and of course, it was originally printed in the Scars of Mirrodin expansion of October 2010. Neveniral's Disc, which I believe was also featured in the art around the cards on the box, which the, um, Neveniral's Disc is from Limited Edition Alpha from August 1993 and last printed in 5th edition, March 1997. Four mana, enters the battlefield tapped, so you... Next turn you untap it, pay one, untap it, destroy all, all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. So I believe this would be included in that, destroying this artifact. So, that's interesting. Probably also if you had, had a card that said untap target artifact, you could do it right then. But Now this is the new art for Soul Ring, which you um, can find in the Commander box sets. If you have them, or if you can find like the $10, 100 card boxes, just the box. It doesn't have the large cards, but you can find the just the 100 card boxes at Walmart sometimes. But there's one of these in each one, but this is the first time in foil, and the first time it came with that new art, which is very nice new art. Okay, so Sol Ring was 
from limited edition alpha and last printed in, in unlimited edition core set except now it's been in commander as well where you pay one mana and you can tap and add two to your mana pool so immediately you reap the benefit of getting one extra mana so essentially if this is the first turn play you could play it and then play something else that costs two so that's that's like the perfect combo right there so you've played three cards right away and you have like a benefit going of course that's typically better in commander anyway and then we have sundering titan costs eight and let's see here he's from dark steel expansion february 2004 costs eight when it enters the battlefield or leaves the battlefield choose a land of each basic land type then destroy those lands and it's a 710. Now we have Zoran Orb, which is from the Ice Age expansion of 1995. No mana cost, sacrifice the land, you gain two life. Interesting. That could be useful if you had like a large amount of land and you needed life gain. Because sometimes you're, you're gaining all that life, so or you, you keep drawing land and you don't need any more land because highest card in deck's five and you got like eight land out there, start sacrificing a couple. Works out nice. So, coming up next, we have Memory Jar, Mox Diamond, Jester's Cap, uh, Mirari, and Karn Silver Golem. So, we will see what we get. Mox Diamond, before I start with it, is from Stronghold Expansion, 1998. It's colorless. And if it enters the battlefield, you may discard a land card instead. If you do, put it on the battlefield. If you don't, put it into its owner's graveyard. You add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Very nice right there. Just peel it back a bit. Alright. Now I have the Mox Diamond. I've already read that one to you. Then we have Jester's Cap. It's four. You and oh, yeah, Jester's Cap originally printed in Ice Age and last printed in ninth edition. So Jester's Cap costs four. You pay two and tap it. You sacrifice. Search target player's library for three cards and exile them. Then that player shuffles his or her library. So that is kind of nice there. And art works a little spooky too. Alright, we have Karn Silver Golem. I believe he was originally from Urza Saga. Yes, he's originally from Urza Saga. October 1998. Legendary Artifact Creature Golem. And of course, if you know him now, you have Karn. Oh, I forget the name of him now. It's uh, Karn Liberated. And he's a planeswalker, but here's the Legendary Artifact Creature. Whenever he blocks, becomes blocked, he gets minus four, plus four until end of turn. And you pay one target non-creature artifact, becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost until end of turn. Kind of nice there. So, that's Karn. Then we have Memory Jar from Urza's Legacy. Pay five, mana to cast. Sacrifice each player, exiles all cards from his or her hand face down and draws seven cards. At the beginning of the next end step, each player discards his or her hand and returns to his or her hand each card he or she exiled this way. So, you get a new hand, you get to play what you have from it, and then you discard all of those and gain the ones you exiled originally back. Very interesting. And last but not least, we have Marari from Odyssey, and last printed in Time Spiral as a time-shifted card. Marari costs five. It's a legendary artifact, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may pay three. If you do copy the spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. So that's a very nice card there. Very shiny too. All right, so. There you have the relics. Moving on, we have legends next.